I would just uh, hand it over to him. He will present us Frontera large scale open source web crawling frameworks. Welcome, Alex. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, hola, los participantes. <laughs> so, a few words about myself. Uh, I was born in Yekaterinburg in Russia. It's like in the middle, about 1,000 and a half kilometers from Moscow to the east. Uh, I was working five years at Yandex. Yandex is a so-called Russian Google, number one search giant in Russia. Uh, I was working in search quality department and was responsible for development of social search, QA search. Uh, at the moment, like, so we had access to the whole Twitter data, so uh, we built our search based on Twitter data. Uh, later, I moved to Czech Republic and uh, worked two years at the Vast Antivirus. This is like, <laughs> out later, the most popular one in the world. Uh, it has about uh, 200 million users. And uh, I was responsible for automatic false positive solving uh, and large scale prediction of malicious download attempts. Uh, so let's go with Frontier. Um, I, put, I put this quote here uh, because uh, crawl frontier became such a common term in the web crawling society. So basically, when crawling works that way, you pull the seats in, crawler starts to go there, gets some uh, links from there, and then continues to get these links out of there. So the uh, place where these links are stored before they will be fetched is called Frontier. So here, this term comes from shipping. Uh, obviously, all the Spanish guys know what is Frontera. <laughs> but <laughs> I just realized that Frontera is like not so, not so or Frontier is not so used, used word especially in the countries when, uh, when where is no sea. So this is a place where all the stuff is like people and goods are before they go to the land or to the sea. So a few words about motivation. Why we decided uh, to build Frontera. We had a client. They came to us and said, okay, one billion of pages per week. So, uh, and then we want you to process these pages and uh, tell us what are the biggest hubs uh, frequently changing. So, we just have a look at it. Uh, one billion, what does it mean? It like means 150 millions per day and uh, about, about 1,000 and a half per second. So that was quite a lot. Uh, later I will show you that current scrappy abilities is kind of 1,500 1, pages per minute, not per second. So uh, here you see the very important picture. It's an um, uh, illustration of uh, hyperlink induced topic search from John Kleinberg. Uh, Hubs are the nodes with uh, lots of outgoing links, but bigger nodes are a 40 sites, which has lots of incoming links. It's similar to the scientific publications. If you are cited much, it means society gives you support. How to calculate hub and a 40 score on a link graph, uh, and that became history. So now uh, every major search system is using this to, to rank the pages and uh, to research the link graph. And um, another thing is like, uh, it's not like Scrappy wasn't suitable for broad crawls. That's not true. But uh, like broad crawls with Scrappy was hard, really hard. Uh, and nobody does that. Uh, so like favored Apache Nudge instead of and we did not like that. So we wanted uh, to make them able to crawl with Scrappy, whatever they want. So uh, there are two modes of execution of Frontera, uh, single-threaded and distributed. Uh, Frontera is 
mostly all about what to crawl next and when. It's basically guiding the crawler what to do next. Uh, uh, single threaded mode for up to 100 websites. This is a proper uh, value because uh, it heavily depends on the intensity of your parsing task. Uh, your documents can be can connect can can have like a lot of links, which is like gives an, uh, gives more documents. Uh, uh, or your websites can be like uh, less like not so responsive as as others. So and also. Um, Sometimes spiders additional post processing, which is also CPU intensive. Um, so it's basically all about CPU. Uh, uh, for performing broad crawls, uh, there is a distributed node. Uh, here's the main features of uh, single threaded version. Uh, the main feature, from my point of view, is like uh, it's real time and notch. Uh, what does that mean? It's like uh, when you work with notch, first thing you do is like you pull the seeds and then you run crawling of one second. Then the whole thing stops. You need to run the uh, command to process what was crawled, to generate a new links to crawl, like new batch, and then continue with crawling. So it's like a batched with and always has steps. Uh, Frontier is opposite. Everything is online. So it, it never stops. <laughs> and uh, it batches uh, every batch, like at the end of uh, every batch, batch is requested, and then it's continue. Therefore, we avoid waiting for last URLs, which are like taking too long to download, and this is like, for those of you who has experience with your crawling, you will probably know about it. Actually, can you raise your hands like who was doing uh, broad crawls before? <laughs> okay, one person. Okay, who knows about Scrappy? <laughs> okay, it's much better, you know. <laughs> well, uh, another thing is we have a storage abstraction. So uh, you have uh, out of the box, you have SQL Alchemy and HBase. Uh, SQL Alchemy means you can plug any popular database you you know. My SQL, Postgres, Oracle, and so on. Uh, or you can implement your own. There is like pretty straightforward interface. Uh, uh, third thing we have canonical URLs resolution abstraction. Uh, this is a like usually underestimated problem, and uh, uh, you have each page. If you uh, just take it as a as a unique content, each page from each website can have many URLs. Yeah, so it's always a question which one to use. If you find the same content um, by using two URLs uh, and will not pay attention to this, you will end up with duplicates in your database. And here we provide uh, an interface to implement your own canonical URL structure. It could be different depending on your application. Uh, and the last thing is like Scrape ecosystem. Uh, we have a big community, good documentation, I believe. And it's like really easy to customize, mostly because of Python. So, uh, benefit from Frontera. Uh, when you have a need of mm, uh, of your own metadata storage or content storage. So you have a website and you want to show the content, uh, or you have an intranet and you want to show the content from database or from metadata. Uh, so basically, Frontier is the right, right, right thing to do. Uh, uh, if then, second thing is when you want to isolate your URL ordering or queuing from the spider. Uh, and the third thing, when you have like pretty advanced URL ordering logic, uh, with big websites, or you want uh, big websites, it means like if your website is so big and there is no way to crawl it full, you can adjust crawling logic so it will like select the best pages to crawl website. Mm, 
here's the architecture single threaded version uh, let's go probably from right to left uh, you see the database and you see the backend backend is responsible for communication with database mostly uh, also in backend it is coded uh, the model for URL ordering and queuing so uh, you just um, it's tightly connected with type of storage you use therefore it's in the backend uh, Frontera middlewares uh, allows you to modify the contents of requests or responses uh, as, as like as you want. So you can put your fingerprinting uh, of URL or you can change the meta fields, add scoring fields or another thing you need. Uh, Frontera API is basically the API looking outside of Frontera framework which is like uh, possible to use by any other process mon management code or uh, crawler. So crawler is basically the stuff which makes uh, DNS resolution and fetching the content from the web. So um, you can um, put anything you want here. Uh, obviously we have everything for Scrappy. Uh, and also we have a example for library. Just to demonstrate that Frontera is working well outside of Scrappy. And sites is the internet. Fill the shots, you ring a bell. <laughs> I put that image here <laughs> because it's like uh, how we are friending with Scrappy. Uh, so basically, Frontera is implemented as a set of custom scheduler and spider middleware uh, for Scrappy. So um, all that stuff is pluggable, and uh, Frontera doesn't require Scrappy. It can be used separately. Uh, mostly, Scrappy is used for process management and fetching. Yeah, so, uh, and of course, we are friends forever. <laughs> Guys from Scrappy are always like attacking me, like to, well, not not from Scrappy, but from Scrapping Hub, are always attacking me, like. Let's integrate it even more. <laughs> so my task is like to stand against that. <laughs> because it's like I have to think about the community and the band. So here's like a short quick start to try Frontera in single thread mode. Uh, first you have to install it, then you have to write a simple spider, maybe like 20 lines of code, including imports. And uh, well, you can take example one. Uh, Edit spider settings by and put scheduler and Frontera spider middleware there. So Scrappy what scheduler to get and scheduler later will load all the Frontera stuff. Uh, the crawl, finish with that's it. Check the database if you use database. Uh, here is a list of use cases for distributed version. It's like a completely different story. Uh, single version is meant for like maybe 50 or 100 websites and you know all these websites. But when you like have a broad crawl, you don't know what you will face. So uh, if you have set of URLs and you need to revisit them, like set of URLs, I mean like hundreds of thousands. And if you are building your search engine and you need to get content somewhere, uh, if you are doing some research on web graph, Frontier also could be useful. Therefore, like, you don't need to save content, which is like making uh, work a bit easier. Uh, you have a topic and you want to crawl the documents about that topic. Imagine like you have like, you want to crawl about sport cars. So you run the front end. After some time, you have a lot of documents, much better than Google, because Google will show you like only first few pages, and still, it's like how to get this page out of Google. Um, more general focus scrolling tasks, uh, as I mentioned pre previously, like if you have, um, if you want to search at some topic for a big hub. 
you probably will get benefit from Frontera. So here's the architecture of distributed version. Um, let's go from Scrappy. Uh, you pull, uh, I will just describe the data flow and uh, operation, how all this stuff works. So you pull your seeds in spiders uh, above. Then uh, these uh, seeds are passed to spider lock uh, by means of Kafka transport. This is a Kafka topics. Uh, and then from Kafka, we will get to strategy worker and DB worker. Strategy worker is responsible for all the scoring stuff and for making decision. When do we have to stop the crawling? It's like when crawling goal is achieved. Uh, DB worker is responsible for building new um, URLs or old ones, doesn't matter, uh, and producing new batches. Scoring lock is a place where uh, all the scores about URLs are passed to the DB worker. So um, seeds are going to strategy worker and DB worker. Strategy worker saves uh, sites that are new URLs and we have to crawl them, uh, cal calculate score for them, uh, score is propagated to DB worker and DB worker is uh, making a new batch for them. A new batch is propagated to spiders and spiders are downloading this uh, batch of URLs. After that, uh, we, get a, uh, we get a content and we send this content, well, we actually do also parsing and then we send this content by means of spider log again, to strategy worker and DB worker. Uh, strategy worker extracts links, uh, look at them. If they are new, they need to be scheduled. Uh, it calculates score again, puts the score to scoring clock, and uh, DB worker is saving the information about what was downloaded and so on. So basically, we have a closed circle. <coughs> uh, uh, so, <laughs> Actually, now I'm running out of time. Uh, so you can put any strategy you want in strategy worker. Uh, it's implemented in Python, strategy worker and DB workers. And uh, well, let's go. Uh, here's the main features of distributed frontier. Well, we use uh, Kafka as a communication layer and uh, we use a crawling strategy abstraction uh, as I mentioned, in strategy worker, so you can implement your cloning goal, URL ordering scoring model uh, in separate model. Polite by design, it means you will not get blocked because uh, your mm, website will be downloaded by at most one spider. This is achieved by uh, means of partitioning in Kafka. And yeah, Python, everything is in the Python. Requirements, so you need to have HBase and Kafka, it's crappy, 0.24 at least. Uh, first two is easier to get by installing Cloudera CDH. Uh, DNS service, uh, because we are making DNS intensive stuff. So it's better when your <coughs> DNS service will be pointing to upstream service servers, like some big ones from big providers, maybe American Verizon or OpenDNS. Uh, Hardware requirements, quite interesting slide. Uh, so here's like how to calculate from your need what hardware you need for hard for front uh, Typically, each spider gives you one pages per minute. It's including parsing, and uh, spiders is about four to one. So here's an example. If you have twelve spiders, that will give you. 14,000 pages per minute. It means three strategy workers and three DB workers. Total 18 cores because each worker will consume one core. Well, memory would be would be nice also uh, for strategy workers. So some gotchas. Well, I would better skip this uh, <laughs> if you want uh, because we are running out of time. So here's like mm, short 
uh, quick start, but it's not quick at all. <laughs> so <laughs> prepare HBase and Kafka uh, and install distributed Frontera. Uh, I think if you have HBase and Kafka, you will need like two, three hours to get it running from scratch. So it's like all the instructions are mostly at, at this website. Uh, of course, we will be like working more on this. Uh, at the moment, the documentation is like is not at the best. It's, it's its best state. Uh, so we made a quick Spanish crawl. I just told like be, before the presentation. Uh, so uh, to test Frontera, we just wanted to find out what are you guys doing here in Spain besides playing football. So <laughs> we decided to check out what are your biggest websites. Uh, and I just took from Demos all the Spain, Spanish content, all the Spanish URLs, and put pull them as the seeds, uh, having like 12 spiders, and running in this for one and a half months. So probably you are now at least one of these websites at the top. Uh, and at the, after all, we crawled about 47 million of pages. You know that you have at least 22 websites with more than of pages. It's like a lot, but considering this uh, count of dom domains found, it's like we should found much more. I think uh, here are some future plans. Uh, we want definitely revisiting strategy out of the box. So yeah, <clears throat> uh, it means. If you performed a crawl, um, you then probably you need to recrawl it for some uh, to get what what was the changes in your content. So, um, and also you want to recrawl it by some ordering, which is based on how content is changing. Yeah, page rank and hits based. I already told about hits. Page rank is just another uh, link algorithm, link graph algorithm. <coughs> Uh, we want our own URL parsing, uh, it's like scrap it. So we will, I guess, we will get it soon because of that. Uh, and yeah, we will test it on larger scales. Preguntas. Uh, Algunas preguntas, questions, anyone? Okay, so uh, I have a small question. Uh, how do you guys uh, work out canonical URLs? Because I, I think that's uh, that might get really tricky in, in some pages. So um, uh, there are like few approaches. Um, actually, some website webmasters they provide canonical URL uh, in the content, so you can get if it is there. That's the best. If it is not there like what you can do you can uh you can probably um, analyze the structures for example if you have a chain of redirects you can get uh, the last one in the chain and yeah basically with some set of heuristics it's like there is no clear decision uh the target of frontier is to provide interface for this yeah so uh, that's it actually uh, if you look in you will find out that we are just picking the last one from the VDX chain. This like gives us ability like to avoid duplicate to do the thing thing. Hi, Stiban. Uh, I have a question. Uh, as I know, uh, Scrappy has, uh, has a uh, web-based dashboard. And uh, do you spider work with it too? Mm. Actually, actually, they should work. Yeah. Uh, because you can put your own scheduler and spider middleware in these spiders, and that potentially should work. Uh, as I know, this uh, web board uh, should uh, create some rules, and then uh, Scrappy uses rules. So, mm, I'm sorry. What rules? Uh, like uh, rules, like, like a spider rules, you know. Um, sorry, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like you know, 
I'm kind of more dedicated to scrolling, so I'm honestly I'm not well aware of what Scrappy is all about. Yeah, so let's talk later. I will con I will just point you to the right guys. Uh, second question: uh, Do you use some asynchronous library, uh, or uh, as I know, uh, as, uh, if you run your uh, application as a single thread, do you, do you use some asynchronous code? Uh, yes, we use Twisted mostly because it helps to calls to some functions and let, just makes code more readable. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Maybe one quick last question before we change rooms. Is there anyone? I think otherwise um, Alex will be uh, outside. I, I can show you something interesting if you don't have questions. <laughs> okay, really quick. Uh, we have well, 45. I think the next talk will begin. And So that, that was done 15 years ago. Uh, this is, was done by Andre Broder and others. This is a, they, they are from Yahoo Research. This is a structure of the internet they think of. So in the middle, we have a strong, strongly connected continent. They think it's like there are a lot of links, highly, websites highly interconnected inside. And here, like a butterfly, you know. Uh, here is like incoming links to this strongly connected component. Right, there are like outgoing links and a lot of them. And uh, you have this butterfly has a tendrils, so it's like a bit like an octopus, you know. <laughs> so um, these tendrils they have outgoing links, and some tendrils have only ingoing links, like uh, to the end or to the out, and they have tubes. You can bypass strongly connected component from in links right to the out links. So, and actually, you also have a disconnected stuff. That means there is a pages we will never find if we will just go and try to crawl the internet. So, I wish someday, these days, uh, we find this picture to prove that it is wrong. Or it is true. Okay, perfect. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>